Okay, what we're doing today then is we're going to try and draw the regression line on the calculator. So if we can put this data into your machine, in statistics mode you need to put the X numbers in list 1 and the Y values in list 2. So I've done this over here. As you can see, the X numbers are in list one, the Y values in list two. Right, once we've done that, we need to make sure that we haven't got that on the, the menu bar, press F6. So we've got graph, calc, etc. Press graph. Now, if you press graph one, if you did this last time, it will be set up to do a scatter graph. But if not, you'll have to press setting and hover down to graph type and make sure it says scatter by pressing F1. Then press blue button. Now press graph one. Then you can see the scatter graph has been drawn for you. There looks to be a negative correlation and therefore the line of best fit will have a negative gradient because it's coming down. Press calc. Press X for straight line regression. Then it doesn't matter, as I say, which one you pick here, but pick for the sake of what the formula booklet shows us, A plus BX, where B is the gradient. So press F2. And here it tells us that where it crosses the Y axis, that line will be at 272. The gradient is minus 2.3. Um, the R value, if we look there, it's quite strong negative correlation because it's not minus 0 0.99. To draw and see that line of best fit, press F6. And there it is there, looks quite good. Um, the distance between the data points and the lines, if we remember, those are called from these videos, that, oh, sorry, that distance is called a residual. If you want to see what those residuals are, there is a way. Press the blue button, or not. Let's try pressing Shift, Shift and Menu. Shift, Menu. Now we've got this thing. If you come down to where it says Resid List, probably say None on it at the moment, but if you change that to put F2 to so put them in list, and let's put them in list three. Don't put them in list one or two, it will type over your data. Put them in list three or four, and then press the blue button. Now exit, nothing's appeared. However, so we have to do it once more. So I'll press for starters, graph, graph one, calc, X for straight line regression, A plus BX, there's the data values again. You can draw if you like, or see it's the same. Then press exit a few times, and you get back to your data values, and in list three has become the residuals. See, some of them are positive, some of them are negative. It keeps scrolling down here. The biggest residual is seven. And the rest are pretty small. So there's only that data point that's quite away from the, the equation of the line. But the rest of them are small. Um, just one other thing to show you in case you need some values to write down at some point. Um, back here. If we press exit a few times. Now if you press calc at the here. Just check your setting. You've got, ignore this one variable because we've not got one variable, we've now got two. So we've got very here, we've got a two variable <clears throat> x are in list one, y's are in list two, and you've got a frequency of one of each data point, which is true. Blue button, and you shouldn't really need to play with that again. If we press two var, we see some information. There's, if you need it, there's the mean of x, the sum of the x squared, standard deviation for 
x. If you keep scrolling down, then you get the mean of y, some of the y, some of the y squared, etc. And you get all sorts of things if you keep scrolling down here. And those might be useful at some point. Okay, that's about it. One question. Here is Squirrel's favourite Mr. Man, Mr. Greedy, just like her. What do you think my favourite Mr. Man is? <laughs> 